two, one. Yo, my people, lateness is greatness. We're back again, the Battle of the North show. And like I said, do you know what I mean? Today, we ain't got no Liverpool representative. Drifty Drifty couldn't make tonight. He'll be back next week. But what more do we need than Big Steve and Akeem? Do you know what I mean? The powerhouses. Man United have just won 9-0. I, I think that's enough goals, is it, Akeem? Would that satisfy your taste buds this evening? <laughs> no, when you're, used to, when you're used to winning like Man United, it, it's not that much of a big deal. But I, I have to say, 9-0, <laughs> it shows everyone that number 21 is coming. Like I always thought was going to happen. So number 21 uh, is almost here, mate. Uh, big wow. Steve, um, how are you, bro? Uh, and how do you react to Man United? Look, South, South you? Look at his face. Listen, <laughs> listen. I thought, yeah, you couldn't get anyone any worse than Saeed. And then this guy rocks up, who just <laughs> said Martial is the new Henri, and United are going for the, the 21. It's not happening. Keep, hey, keep Frodo at the wheel. Keep Ollie at the wheel. Every time he's struggling, you pull a result like that. All the fans go mad. You all come out the woodwork again. Start talking all the nonsense again. And at the end of the season, the final day, when we see the scenes of all the players crying on the pitch and City's got them blue ribbons around the trophy, you'll be nowhere to be seen again for six months. Usual. Uh, so, Steve, we're talking about the Premier League, not the League Cup. That cartoon. Yeah. Yeah. We'd love a League Cup. We'd love a League Cup. We're talking about, fans, we're talking about... Man United fans out there now that have never seen you win the Premier League, so they'd love a League Cup. So don't be dissing the League Cup because in a few <laughs> years that'll be your <laughs> trophy. That. How many of your fans have seen you win in Europe? One in Europe, <laughs> listen. We're in the Champions League, mate. You're in the Europa League. You're supposed to be the famous team in the world, and you're playing in Europa League. I have to say, Matisse, just a quick one, yeah. Just on. a quick one, you know, when they were winning trophies and all that back in the day, that they like to, you know, I know Akeem watches the Treble 99 DVD every week, but when they were watching when winning trophies, yeah. Liverpool won the Europa League and the and the Carling Cup and something else, and they had a little banner up saying Mickey Mouse trophies and all that. Yeah, I can imagine. Now, I can imagine. now they're shit. Yeah, now they're shit, and their level is the Europa League and the no. and the Carabao Cup. Apparently, it's the best the best in the world now. The Europa League, it's a European trophy. Yeah, <laughs> and all that. Have you ever heard so much nonsense? Man? Steve, the, European, the, 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 the UEFA Cup back then wasn't as prestigious as it is now. When we won it. We we added a bit of gloss on it. It is a major trophy. Well, Everyone knows the major Nobody trophy. Nobody wanted it, mate. Nobody wanted it. I, I wanted it. It's a major trophy. It's a major trophy. I'll Interesting. Take it. What before 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 I let you two do a historical battle because Zaid uh, Zaid got absolutely tormented tormented last show um, with Steve coming out with 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 facts from the history that like, I don't know if Zaid knew about or he wasn't ready for. Um, so obviously we had to swap in my, my, let's swap him. Akeem in for permanent basis now. Akeem, can you handle Big Steve on a, on a regular basis? Are we going to be can't right? handle it. To be, honest, to be honest, I can't believe we're doing a show with, with a, a fan who's who's never seen his uh, team win a European trophy. It's like, <laughs> like this would be a European trophy only show. Like not not. not what, Listen, what are you talking about here? Carabao Cup. We're talking about the cartoon. <laughs> if we won a European trophy, yeah, you'd say you'd be sat here with a guy that's not won the Premier League because a typical Man United fan, he just moves the goalpost, to, you know, like Saeed did. Saeed mm -hmm. said, Man United's going to win the league. And then he said, but Man City, I think, might win the league. And then Liverpool might win the league. So he's covered his ass, And you're just the same. So you're no, saying, no, no, going no, on about no, the no, Europa no, League, no, yeah, no, because no, you're in it. You're not no, in the Champions League. The top table of English football is here, yeah, and we're sat there, and you're down here somewhere in the Europa League, and we're just throwing you little scraps of shit, yeah. It's really different. It's really different. It's really different between me and anyone else. I will just say the 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 facts now, okay? I will say. Okay, you, yeah. So, so I mean, key, right, not, so let, let, let's, let's put some more. context around this. Right, Your team have just won nine nil against Southampton. Your level on points for Manchester City. They have two games in hand. I want to get your definitive ambitions and expectations for the season on record. What do you think is going to happen? Is Oli good enough? Everything. Give it to me. All of it. All right. oh, and, and this is what's scary. Yeah. This is what's scary. Oli, we all know Oli is potentially not good enough. Okay. Many people say he's not good enough. And we're still top of the league or joint top at the moment. So that just shows the strength of our squad. It shows the ability of our players. It's the reason why I said, look, we've got the young, we've got the young Thierry Henry on our side. You know? 
We've got the new Darren Fletcher and Scott McTominay. We've got all the makings of a of a treble winning side. Not this year, probably next year. This side, wow. this, year, this year, it will take yeah. the lead. This year, so, will so take so the lead. <laughs> yeah. You think you have one of the best winning. squads we have the the wow. of a, We have the makings of a treble winning uh, side. Not this year, but we have the makings of it. We've got the best player in the world, okay? In the midfield. Oh, wow. Pogba. We've got the best January signing of all time, Bruno Fernandes. The best January signing of all time, Bruno. Best, hold on a minute. Did you just yeah. say the best January signing? Well, who was the best um, May signing and who was the best June doesn't signing? Matter. Doesn't, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. We're not talking about it. We're not talking about way, it. No one cares about you when he's signing. Team, so it's always. It, it's an important <laughs> fact. It's an important stat and it's an, it's an important observation. But long story short, this is going to be the top four. Man United first, Liverpool second, and it's going to be a battle between third and fourth. Between Tottenham. Tottenham and Man City yeah. for the battle. You're trolling. You're trolling. Yeah, Absolutely not, you're not, trolling. There's I'm no not, way. Matisse, when we saw Matisse, even back in September, I said yeah. City will just about finish third. That is what I said. And that's what's going to happen. And why, why would you think that that's still going to happen after what you because said for Man City in the last um, run? They'll crumble. As soon as they've got to get on an aeroplane and they've got to play in the dodgy... It, uh, they, they've already had a rigged draw anyway, as usual, to get an easy draw in, in Europe. Easy. Just beat Bayern Munich and Dortmund. <laughs> over, over the last five years, you've had the easiest draw that I've ever. Everyone, even you've admitted that, Steve, in the past. But anyway, long story short, as soon as that starts, Matisse, they're going to mm. fall apart. They're going to crumble. That's when mm. they're going to crumble. But you're, but you're, 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 you know, you're level on points, and they've got two games in hand, Aki. Two games, not one. Now they're going to up hand. They're going to leave for a bit. I, I agree there. They're going to, for the next month, everyone's going to sing their praises and they're going to look like the best team in the world. But next month, in March, they're going to fall apart. Simple. Interesting. I, I, we've got a comment here saying, man, you predicted uh, United lost in the big six. Yes, I did. Shoot me now. And I predicted an Arsenal win. And both of them have gone against me. First of all, I didn't ex expect Southampton to get a red card in the opening minute. I don't know what that guy was doing on his debut. Decided to get sent off and just hand the game over to Manchester United. Still give you full credit because my team up, get, came up against the 10 men of Fulham a couple weeks ago. And we still didn't pattern them. You managed to win 9-0. So... 10, 11 men, that's very impressive. Um, but even still, I, I want to get back onto your Bruno argument before we continue with what happened in this game because Luke Shaw, I want to talk about him. He had a great game as well. I think he got two assists. But did he get pulled off at halftime? Yeah. So he, so look, let me talk about Luke Shaw very briefly. I think mm. he's obviously had a lot of stick. He's been at Man United for more than five years now. And he's, not um, a lot of stick. he's had a lot of cake. He's had a lot of cake. Yeah, well, <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, yeah. well, yeah, look, look, a lot of people have com uh, um, commented on his weight or you know, him not being as fit as he could be. He's already an injury-prone player as it is. But obviously, just like a few headlines have said, this is sure flank redemption. He's back. You know, he's back to his best right now. Mm -hmm. This is the best I've seen Luke Shaw since he first joined Man United and just before, obviously, him getting signed. I do think that, obviously, the sign of Tellers has probably pushed him on and made him more of a player going forward. Now, I will still say he is vulnerable at the back in terms of his positioning. Mm -hmm. But probably he's quick. He can get back in those positions and, and slots, which has saved him. So, big up uh, Luke Shaw. He's definitely been one of our best players over the last, what, five, six games now? So, do you, do, you, do you think he has a chance of hitting that England spot or too much, too soon for him? I think it's um, it, it's dependent. He's got to play at this level for the rest of the season because some of the other players have got credit in the bank. That's what I like to always call it. They've got credit in the bank. They've got... Pick, OK, I know Trent doesn't play in the same position, but Trent, for example, can afford... Got credit. Yeah, because he's got credit in the bank. For what he's done over the last two to three years, he can play a bit bad for a couple of weeks and mm -hmm. the manager will still pick him. Do you know what I mean? Whereas Shaw has played so averagely, uh, so average for so many years, yeah. now he's got to prove, he's got to put in nine out of, out of ten performances every week to have a chance in the squad. Mm -hmm. you know, I agree with that, to be fair. Uh, Big Steve, what did you make of the 9-0? Are you... Are you, you don't sound to be threatened. You don't, you don't seem to be worried. Listen, it's a quick listen, little nine listen. situation. It's a well, it's a well known fact, yeah, that Akeem loves spice and mushrooms and all that stuff. He's into all that. <laughs> as you can tell by the way he's talking, yeah. So after the show, we'll put up the number. If anyone's suffering with substance abuse, you can ring Frank on on our eight hundred number, and they'll sort it out. Because Akeem's is in the program, and he's learn, you know, he's getting through it. But don't worry about it. Secondly. Yeah, listen. Keep keep winning nine nil. 
because it doesn't matter. We've got two games in hand. We've come from nowhere. We were 12 points behind at one point. You lot were jumping around, singing all your songs, Nick Nat, Paddy Whack, Give the Dog a Bone, and all them old-fashioned shit tunes that you roll out. And at the end of the day, we've come from nowhere, and we're in a better position. That is a great result for City, that, because Frodo's going to keep his job for a few more months there, and that's all we need. And Luke Shaw, come on, man. Luke Shaw, what did he do against Sheffield United at Old Trafford? Hey, 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 hey. Hey, what did he do? What did he do? In February, in February 2021, you're in no right to criticise any of our players. Most of our players will walk into your starting eleven. Whoa, 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 whoa. In fact, in fact, he knows, yeah, that that ain't true. He's that trying to get reactions. Just, that is the biggest sort of bullshit I've ever seen. Out of starting 11, we'll take probably three of your players, maybe four. The rest of them. Sure. That's, why, that's why we're top of the league with two games in hand, yeah? Okay, that's okay. Why you're, listen, that's why you're in the Europa League. We're in the Champions League, and that's why we done you in the semi final, and we're in the final. So don't talk nonsense. Well, yeah, what is that? Because we'll be watching Coronation Street, and we'll be winning the Carabao Cup. We'll be on the Champions League, the big nights here yeah, on the Tuesday night. You'll be on Channel Seventy Five somewhere playing someone in Kazakhstan. Yeah, and we'll be crying <laughs> at the end of the season when we do that and we win the league again. And all this nonsense that you just come out with saying that Man City will crumble. Yeah. Two years ago, we won every single domestic trophy. Yeah, that's never been done in football history before. Oh, so there was no other crumble there from us. Akeem, you're getting ahead of yourself. There's no way don't, don't. You, I could probably pick maybe two or three players that gets into Man City's team on from your team, not the other way around. I'm sorry. Who, I'm sorry. Who, okay, so, so who, it, who it, from Man City's team would you take? There's two players that out of their team that gets in our team. Yeah, you've yeah. got Paul Pogba who washes the kit. Yeah, and you've got Bruno Fernandez. What you've got? Okay, cool. That's why he plays for you. That's why he plays yeah. for you. Okay, cool. Yeah, he plays for the biggest club in Manchester and the biggest club in the world. In the Europa League. Yeah. What, I will say, what I will say is, what will who will take from your from your squad without even thinking? We'll take Kevin De Bruyne. Obviously, we'll take Bernardo Silva, and we'll take Diaz. Now, all of the other players, quite frankly, are. Maybe up in the air. Please do yeah. not tell me. Foden. Please, please do not tell me about. Foden. Sorry. Foden. Foden. Yeah, Foden will be on the bench. He'll be on our yeah. bench. Seriously. Be on our bench. We're talking You've got about Tommy and Fred. You've got McTominay and Fred starting in your yeah. team. McTominay and Fred. Get yeah. a grip of your life. That's what it's all about. Point? What have you oh, got? Oh, Rod oh. Rod Ilkay, Ilkay Gundogan. Ilkay Gundogan. He's tearing, he's tearing oh, the league up. Oh, I wonder what Drifty would have to say about all this. I can't wait. What's that nonsense? <laughs> We, listen, listen, oh, listen. Paul Pogba. Can Chelsea? Can Chelsea? He's better than Shaw. Pog, look, we've got, the, we, we've got the best midfield in the league. That's no, that's, no, that's, no. that's almost Sheffield United that. just turned you over, mate. So you haven't got the best midfielder in the league. You haven't. Bruno and Pogba didn't know what day it was. Bruno and Pogba are the best two midfielders in the league. They're not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You said that in a, in a, in a tone of voice dropped a little bit there. No, 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 no. Matisse, just because I know you wanted to move on here, but I just want to make clear the mm. problem with Man City, yeah, and yeah. What, what what is what Pep and the whole board has had, had a, done a fabulous job doing is yeah. they've worked you with your sexy football style and your tick attacker and you know all your kit sponsorships and your brand partnerships and all of these um all of this great social media work that you've done to increase the value and the equity of this club you've made your club look glamorous and i have to i have to say incredible Massive. work incredible work training cap ground you know the whole complex is incredible incredible mm -hmm. however when you look under the uh, under the cloak of everything you realize you've got a lot of average players mate you've actually got a lot of overrated average players so, so let's let's listen because yeah, obviously it's you you've two got, you've got, head you've and got head edison, for the title you've got, you've got edison at the back that's, that people think he's a top two or top three keeper, he's average, mate. He's, he's absolutely average. You know, oh, never ever tell me, never ever tell me, never ever tell me, never, ever tell me that David De Gea is, 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 um, is, Listen, is I've told you about David De Gea before, Matisse. I don't know if you know this, yeah. Google yeah. it. David De Gea got caught stealing from Tesco's in Didsbury in Manchester. Google it. And do you know what he got caught stealing? Do you know what he got caught stealing? Donuts, because now it's called the donut thief. So Google De Gea stealing, and you read it. And David De Gea, you lot wanted him out a few weeks ago because he was. Why are you, you doing your spare time? Make blogs and, and <laughs> put, put on, the on donut a, thief. The donut thief. 
I want. I want to get. I want to get. Okay, so Akeem, you feel like Man United can go and win the league. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna take that away from you. Um, but I want to get your take on Ole Gunnar Solskjaer then, because a lot of Man United fans don't rate him very highly. And if you're gonna win the league, you need you need a manager that's you must rate the manager to some degree. So so how far can, can Oli take this team then? Because the one thing I'll give Oli credit for is he's managed to create an atmosphere where everybody on in that team are playing for him. You know, you got Bruno Fernandes, you got Pogba, all these guys are playing for him. Wan Bissaka played well today, Luke Shaw played well. I think Tomini was also on the score sheet. It was a ridiculous amount of goal scorers in the end from, from you lot. Um Cavani as well. Uh, Martial. Martial has not had the, the best of seasons, but he's got his goal, got his two goals, which he needed in Rashford. So do you think that he's able to, he seems to be doing a job of like galvanising the team and then, you know, quality is just showing on the pitch. I wouldn't say that they're most, you're the, you're the best coach team in terms of tactically or anything, but I think he's managed to galvanise the key individuals to, to take you to a position where you're at least talking about contending. Is that for real? <laughs> yeah, so, so if anyone wants to check out the, the blog that um Steve wrote one time when he had a few beers, then um do check that out. Um, That's the Daily Mail, mate. It's the Daily Mail. The Daily Mail. Man United goalkeeper caught shoplifting one pound nineteen yeah. donuts from Tesco. Yeah. Yeah, sure. <laughs> sure. I don't think there the best go. I don't think the best keeper in the well, the second best keeper in the Premier League is likely to do that. But look, I'm just gonna go over to, to um Oli Gunnar Solskjaer. Look, I don't think he is an elite manager. I'm not going to lie to you and say that. You know, he is a manager that's learning on the job. He needs to get better. At the moment, as it stands now, even when we're second, and this, this is the thing, Matisse, because our standards are so high, because we're Manchester United Football Club, yeah, we've won it 20 times. Look, because of the, our standards being this high, we're top of the league and we're not even happy. Mm. We're not happy. We're not happy with the manager because the manager's proven time and time again that he has not been able to get the most out of the players when it matters. However, he has galvanised the squad. He has made the um, um, players almost, um, I wouldn't say work for, for each other, but ultimately he's managed to create a synergy and chemistry in the, in the team that Van Howe and Jose Mourinho didn't really manage to do. But yeah. what both of them two done is either brought trophies to, to the club or got strong league position in, in the case of Jose. So that's what he's got to do. He's got to do one of those two things. Simple as that. And I do feel this year, we're not going to win the league because we are one of the... Look, this is not a season which the team who wins the league is going to be one of the best sides of all time. Yeah, this is going to be a choppy season where the winning um, team in the Premier League is probably going to win, lose five, six, maybe even seven games. But we are still going to be on the top because we know how to manage three or four cups at, 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 in a row at one time. Man City doesn't. Our closest challenge is going to be Liverpool because Jurgen Klopp and his squad is much more of a threat than Man City. No one's scared of City anymore. Well, no why, why, why is that, though? Because from what I've seen from City, they look pretty good. I mean, Foden's no, playing well. They, they look good. They, they, they look good, but no one's scared of them anymore. It's just Man City. They're just another like, side. Who's, who's not scared of us like who? We played you in the semi-final. You were scared of us. We beat you. We were. We, you, you were lucky to beat us. You just about beat us. Of course we were. <laughs> you your own half again. <laughs> come to your own half again. <laughs> shitting yourself at the traffic like you do all the time. Look, for anyone watching, for anyone watching, what to just elaborate what I mean. Years ago, people used to look at the fixtures and be, "Oh, it's Man City. Let me go ultra defensive. Can we hold on? Can we get a point?" Now people are playing City like we should beat them. We're annoyed. Yeah, Sheffield City. United turned up the other night like the Harlem Globetrotters and rolled you. So don't say you're you're invincible. Be, not scared be, of you, mate. To, to be fair though, you look at you look at Oli's record in semi-finals in cups. It's not great, Akeem. So. We talk about managing trophies. He's not. I think he's lost more semi-finals than Ferguson already. Absolutely. So sponsored by Viagra because he can't keep a semi. <laughs> Absolutely, and that's what he's got to do. He's got to prove himself in the big games no matter the quarterfinals, the semi-finals, the finals. And that's what he's not done, you know. But then again, Jurgen Klopp. I'm not comparing him. Jurgen Klopp went through a, a series where I think he lost four finals in a row across obviously multiple leagues. Mm. Now Solskjaer needs to kind of they learn. Get to the final. Uh, We'll get to finals. We'll get to finals because we're up there. But we're not a cup team. We're going to prove that our league, we're going to dominate in the league. And that's the... Yeah, that is the team we're leagues. We're a league team, clearly. We just won 9-0, mate. We just won 9-0. We're top of the league. Joint top. <laughs> yeah. so, we are, we are joint league. top now. Last time you finished joint top, you lost the league. Remember, Aguero? <laughs> well, I, remember, I remember that, Riggin, when you paid Joey Barton and the rest of the QPR boys before the game. Yeah, I remember that. I remember that. Hey, money well spent. Money well spent. 
don't worry. worry. That was, by the way, that that was the biggest fraud of all time. That game as well. That was, that was nonsense. But anyway, we'll move on. Even when you played nine minutes extra time against Sheffield Wednesday at home, so Steve Bruce. Here's another thing. Just before we move on, Matisse, for anyone who's listening. Please stop, because I know some. there's a lot of kids here who's pre- probably has not what, been watching football when Fergie was in charge. There's no such thing as Fergie time. It's all a myth. He never created Fergie time. We, Man United just always had injury time because we were getting fouled all the time, and that's the reason why we had that extra time. And number two, no referees was in his pocket, okay? Stop that nonsense. Man United dominated because we were the best side. There's no such yeah. thing as Fergie time, okay? It's okay. bad. I, I, there, there's a few comments that have been saying without without Aguero, who's not back in training yet as well, you guys are at least a human team um, with no striker. I want to get onto this comment here, Stephen. Guys, keep your questions coming in. Um, Gundogan signed a year before Pogba and just turned up this season. Um, mate, why don't you talk about Gundogan's um, inconsistency, I guess, or consistency. Um, Batiste. Batiste. And do not tell me about injuries. Pogba um, had 13 starts in 1920. First of all, Gundogan didn't cost 100 million, yeah? And secondly of all, how many trophies has Gundogan won since he's been at Man City? And how many trophies has Pogba won since he's been at United? But you need to ask this, Gundogan's been in a better team. He's that been in a better team, and Pogba, Pogba's yeah, that's not his fault. fault. That's not his fault. That's not his fault. Paul Pogba's know, but, but there, there, there's, there's a case to be made because Wes Brown won a lot of trophies in Manchester United. It doesn't mean yeah. that he was great. You know, I'm, not one, one, I'm not the one saying that Paul Pogba's the best midfielder in the world. If he's the best midfielder in the world, why aren't he dragging an average Man United team to trophies? He can't get past the semi final. I didn't say he's the best midfielder in the world. I said he's the best midfielder in the league, which he is. You said the world. You said the okay. world before. Okay. I retract, not the world, in the league. He's the best, right. he's the best people in the league. Well, that's not true either, is it? I apologies. <laughs> either way, either, either way, either way, this is the problem with City fans. And this is the problem with a lot of um people who watch City. They they they, they fluff everything up. Oh, Gundogan, oh look how many trophies he's won. That's irrelevant. Mendy's won a lot of trophies, he's terrible. You've got loads of average players that wouldn't even lay boots. Listen, if we've got loads of average players, yeah, why are we winning trophies? And if you've got loads of really good players, why are you not winning trophies? So we're the team that's average, but we're winning everything. And you're the team of superstars that can't get to a Carabao Cup final. So how would you work that one out? Two years ago, two years ago, we won your, yeah. your, your we won three trophies in a season. That's that's not trophies. One. What yeah. trophies did we get? Okay, we won, we won, we won the League Cup, the um, the Europa, the Europa Cup, and, uh, and obviously, uh, <laughs> obviously uh, we're uh, well. <laughs> <laughs> did you ask? Wait, 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 wow. wait, wait, wow. wait, 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 that it's is Arsenal known, type behavior. It's a, right known, it's a known saying. It's a known saying. I'm laughing because I know, knew you were going to say that. Wow. If you win, if you win two trophies in the same year alongside the Community Shield, is respected. Okay, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. We won four. We won four. <sighs> no, well done. Is this? this is shameless. Oh, you didn't, but the thing is, you didn't. No, but you're gassing up because you won two trophies and we won four. And apparently, we're not allowed to talk about that because you're Man United, four. the greatest team in the world, with the Europa League, the Carabao Cup, and the Charity Shield. You just said. I've been an embarrassment as a Man United fan coming out with that nonsense, with that treble. You've just come out with the snidest treble I've ever heard of. Yeah. And we, you know what I mean? We, Paul Pogba was embarrassed lifting that Europa League Cup. Embarrassed me. Absolutely embarrassed. The, the least that, significant that, European, that, European that, Cup, the okay, least right. significant domestic cup, and the charity shield as the treble. Come on now, Akeem. Come okay. on. Okay. They're, 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 least, they're, least, they're less significant, but they're still major trophies. Not, no, the, not major. Not the, the no, community no, no, shield is no, no. not a major no, no. trophy. Not, no, the community shield isn't, but the, the UEFA Cup or the Europa League, whatever you want to call it, is a major trophy. Please come on. Let's stop saying it's not. Just because the you Carabao Cup's a minor. Yeah. 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 If I'm a Man United yeah. fan, yeah. If I'm a Man United fan, yeah, and I've watched the teams that United have had over the years with Giggs, Beckham, Kinchelski, Scholes, Cantona, all the boys, yeah, winning all them titles and that. I am not gonna sit on this show. And tell anyone that the Carabao Cup, the Europa League, and the Charity Shield are big trophies. And I'm not going to definitely not going to sit there and say that the Europa League 
is a major trophy. After all the nonsense you put out years ago, when United were in the Champions League and all the other teams were in the Europa, you used to sit there on your high horse going, Channel 5 this, Channel 5 that, as if you were, you was untouchable. And now that you're absolute dog shit and you're playing in them trophies, all of a sudden them trophies become irrelevant, but they're not because I don't even watch the Europa League game because that is now irrelevant to me. I watch Champions League game where the champions play. Yeah, not down there with all you lot and teams in Kazakhstan and Borat and all them boys playing. It's not for me. <laughs> here's, the thing, here's the thing, Steve. Here's the thing, Steve. I have always said the UEFA Cup or the European League is a major. Of course trophy. you have. Yeah, it is a major. When was trophy. this when you supported Arsenal about ten years ago? It's a major trophy. Yeah, the reason. Okay, okay, okay. Trophy, Do you know what? Let's yeah. use this. Okay, it's a, Akeem, you're saying that the that that you're going to win the league. I yeah. actually don't put the expectations as high for Oli. I think if you finish second. Third, I think it's been a very good season, especially in these circumstances, mainly because yeah, I don't rate Oli very highly. So if you don't win the league, does he deserve to be sacked? Well, yeah, well, well Matisse, we finished third last year. And that was with... Yeah. that. So, look, as Man United, and this is what I mean, look, you know, no disrespect to, you know, Chelsea fans or City fans, but, you know, we're used to... We're used to, we're used to high expectations, yeah? So winning, finishing third is not an acceptable season for Man United. It's okay, Yeah. It's an okay season. It's not acceptable enough. So what we need to do is go to the next level. If we finish third this season, that's a failed season because we finished third last year with a weaker team. Now we've got a stronger side, a team that's, um, that's moulded a lot better than they did last year. We need to be in the title race, which we are. That's check one. But we need to go one better than we did last year. Mm. So that's quite simple. It's not good enough third place. We need to be second at the very least for him to have an acceptable season. But wow. Yeah, of course. But if if you think any less, and this is for anyone who's a Man United fan who's watching, if you think any less, you've got to ask yourself, what type of Man United fan are you? You've got to start questioning. You've got to start questioning the sort of stuff that Steve would have been um, um, uh, had to um, be exposed to 10, 15 years ago when he, they were getting hammered and there was 14th in the league every year. That's the sort of that's yeah. the sort of uh, that's the sort of fan that would expect and be happy with third place. <laughs> you know, United, uh, we win year in year out. <laughs> year in year out, we should be finishing top two or top one year in year out, and anything less should than that's be. not should be. Well, Steve, Steve I mean, uh, Akeem's made a stall. Do you know what I mean? And for the first show that he, that we've got him on for. For for now, now continuation. That's the standard that I'm gonna hold you, man, to when it comes to the rest of the rest of the season is that you need to come and try and win the win the trophies. Um jokes on Steve, we've won um three your UCLs, you haven't won any. And you know the, thing is, yeah, the thing is, these these guys in the chat going on, Man United won three dude. Yeah, yeah, when, I know all about Man United, mate. I live in Manchester, so I've been around for 39 years, so I know everything about Man United. So these guys have to tell start saying that what Man United have won. I know, but what I'm saying is that Man United you're talking about that won them trophies is not the Man United that you've you just seen today. But Akeem still thinks That's it is. Thing, he's, still, he's still got his Man United shirt with Cantona on the back, yeah, that he bought when he swapped over for when he used to support Arsenal. So he's like, you know, he's just gassing it up. But at the end of the day, Man City are where we are. I'm not getting excited. I know what's going to happen. I'm calm because I expect it now. Because what we've got a winning mentality and we actually win trophies now. You don't. So you can pretend Bruno's the best. You can pretend Pogba's the best. You can pretend your goal is the best. But the facts are this. We're going to win the league with two games in hand. You've got Ollie at the wheel and you gassed up about the charity shield. So I think that's a great response from a Man United fan. So I'm pretty happy with myself. Mm. So I, crack I, on. I can't wait. I can't wait to watch. I can't wait to watch City crumble once you're playing. You're, you're, you know, as soon as you're playing some European football and you get on a plane, you're going to get ceased. You're going to get what, what do they call it? What do they call it when you're so scared of flying or you're a bit. You're a bit wobbly on flying. As soon as you start playing those first and second legs, mate, you're travel sickness, travel Dennis sickness. Dennis Bergkamp syndrome it is. Yeah, so you travel <laughs> sickness, and that's it. Whereas Man United are used to playing in the, in Europe. We win in Europe. We won in oh, Europe. Flying to Kazakhstan. <laughs> yeah, yeah, keep this is this is this is this is the point Steve is making. This is old United. You're bringing old United. Not old United. And bringing and bringing those same standards. United. United team. That have not really, you know, you let this let's be real. This is your first proper title race since Ferguson. I know you finished second one year, but you was well off the pace. You weren't even close. It was a, it was just one it was Man City that won it that year, wasn't it? And yeah. and, and it, it was clear. So so you wasn't you finished second, but you wasn't really this is the first time you've been in the, been in the race since what 2013 with, with Ferguson. So 
How can you be so confident that this I mean, team, sorry, this team can literally just go straight to winning the league? Because there's one thing challenging and then going on to win it, but to just go up and win it immediately under this coach who's not as experienced as Guardiola, not as experienced as Klopp, not as experienced as all of these top elite managers at near 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 you in the league. There's even a case to say, is he is he even better than Mourinho? I know Mourinho's getting a lot of stick right now, but for manager for manager, is he better than Mourinho? Okay, so so to answer first, firstly, look. If people were watching this and didn't know anything about football, you'd you got you'd think you guys make it sound like Fergie left hundreds of years ago. You only left the other day. So look, we're we're in the tight race again. Um, yeah, we haven't been in the tight race for a couple of years. All right, not too not too bad. Um, and that's not acceptable, but you know, it's happened now. Look, we you're right. I right, look, I was a Mourinho fan, not in the style of football. I don't care about style of football, I care about the trophies and armpits. I want to see armpits every year, yeah. I want to see us lifting trophies every year. Mourinho would bring that. He he and he'd probably bring it to Tottenham one way, shape, or form. Yeah, that's another story. I wasn't happy about him leaving. Oli Solskjaer's now here. Um, and he's done an okay job. It's just okay. Now, do I think we can go from not being in the tart race to suddenly being in, you know, a, a, a winning the trophy, like you just said, Matisse? Mm. Yeah, I think we can because of the type of year this is. This isn't a year where you're going to see 95 points or 100 points. This is a year where you're probably going to, you could win the league with 84, 83 points maybe. You know, I wouldn't be surprised. I think there's going to be more losses and more unpredictable um, performances for the big sides when Europe starts. And that's why I think Man City is going to crack. Liverpool's got more experience. Liverpool probably going to handle it a bit better. I'm more worried about Liverpool, to be honest. I do think it will still go to the wire. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not sitting here thinking... I'm not sitting here thinking um, um, we're going to win the league by 10 points or 15 points. It's going to be tight. But mm. we are going to come through with it because, and I'll say the simple reason in one sentence, Matisse, mm. our players, our Good players, point. Pogba, F Bruno Fernandes, Anthony Martial, Marcus Rashford. Everton How many of them have won the Premier League? Sorry? How many of them have won the Premier League? Matter, look, Martial. It doesn't matter. How many of our boys have won it? We're used to winning it, mate. You're not. So don't talk nonsense. Don't mention the Premier League until any of them boys have lifted it. It's not relevant. It's not relevant. It's not relevant. It's okay. relevant. All right, David De Gea. You say, you say Martial, for instance, is he really is he really a top, top player? I mean, you're looking at, you're looking at, you're comparing it with Man City. You're looking at De Bruyne. I know Aguero is not fit, but that would be the level of a Premier League winning striker. What, what's to say that those, those you know, the Rashfords, the Martials are going to go on to win it? And then I want to get on to Man City as well, because I want to see if there's any areas of weakness that you're worried about, Steve, in your team. Whereas I know you beat Sheffield United on Saturday as well, but it was it was one goal, Jabri, um, Jabri has used this with the goal. But is there is there any worry that, you know, you're going to run out of firepower in the, you know, to bring this, this the night as well? I said this the other night on the big six, look. The City teams in the past three or four years are blowing teams away, yeah? And everyone's going, oh, you know, this season you're winning 1-0. It doesn't matter. If Man United beat everybody 1-0 and won the league, would anybody care? No. Mm. So, listen, some games we're going to win 1-0. Some games we're going to win 4-0. We beat West Brom away 5-0. And then we beat, we beat Sheffield United at home 1-0. So, it doesn't really matter as long as we're getting the points. Look, we were dead and buried four or five weeks into the season. We've been beat off Tottenham. We've been beat off Leicester. We were 12 points off the pace. Man City had been found out. Pep Guardiola had lost it. And that was the end of Man City, yeah? And look at it now. No one's saying anything now. They're all playing catch-up. We're top of the league with two games in hand, yeah? We've, we've had no striker, yeah? And we've got Zinchenko still playing at left-back, yeah? Mm. But are we worried? No. What is happening is we're adapting. So... Some games, De Bruyne's playing up there. Sometimes we're not playing with a striker. Gundogan's playing further forward. The thing is with Man City is, and with our manager is, he'll adapt it how he needs to adapt it. And I said, beginning of the big six, when we were struggling, that there's only two teams in this in this title race that, that can go on a run. who have got the mentality to go on a run. And that's City and Liverpool. United started their run, and then Sheffield United ended it. Now this 9-0, they're starting it again. But somebody else will end it again soon. Uh, but listen, Man United ain't winning the league with Scott McTominay, Fred, Shaw, Maguire, all that nonsense. They ain't lifting that league, let me tell you that. They ain't lifting the Europa League, in fact. They don't even win that. Well, do you, do you that's, think that's there's any... Um, is, is, there any is there anything to suggest, and this is just to, to, to throw, throw it out there because it's a potential, is that your, your Pep's maybe focus and obsession with winning the Champions League 
and how much we know he likes to tinker in that competition. And we know how much he hasn't won it without Messi and all of these factors that keep being told. Do you think that's going to be something that that distracts you from winning the league? Because, like you said, you're getting a few injuries here and there. No striker. De Bruyne goes down as well. Injuries can play a part if, if you start to have to juggle the Champions League again when it comes around in February. Do you think... Do you think that could be a little thing that could take you off the ball? Maybe the squad won't be able to handle going for the, the two competitions because you're going to want to go for the Champions League as well, isn't Listen, it? Listen, Matisse, the other year, we won every single domestic competition. Alex Ferguson said that was impossible to do. He said nobody could do it, but we done it. And we kept everybody fit and we went we went for every competition. And everyone went, oh, you go, you're putting strong teams out against Burt and Albion and people like that. Yeah, because we kept the momentum going and it won. we won the league on it, yeah? Mm. Listen, this month, February, um, I said it's going to be a tough month for us, so we'll see what we're made of. We're going to come up against games, we're going to look a bit tired, and we're going to do it. If we get through it and we get the results, happy days. And the Champions League, look, there's nobody more frustrated in that Champions League than me. You don't get to that point against Leon and change your whole philosophy and try to overthink it and get beat off Leon. It was an absolute disgrace. And it should never have happened. But look, that's down to Pep Guardiola. And I'm not going to argue with Pep Guardiola because he, he's, the, he's the best manager in the world for me. So, listen, the, the domestic trophies he's brought to the club and the way he's changed the club from top to bottom, he'll always go down as a legend. Man United took years to win the Champions League, yeah? We've only been in it for 12 years, yeah? Arsenal have never won it, you know what I mean? So, at the end of the day, what's the rush? What's the rush? Mm. Don't worry about it. It's only other teams' fans that go on about the Champions League. Oh, and Kwani, all oh, this, that, oh, We're not bothered, oh. mate. We're just getting ourselves cemented in the in, in, in the league domestically, winning the trophies. The Champions League will come, trust me. And when it does, you'll have nothing else to say then. Because if Pep went and won the Champions League this year and then didn't win the Prem, they'd say, oh, you won the Champions League, but you can't win the Prem. Because that's the mentality of other supporters. Because what it comes down to is jealousy. Because you imagine, Matisse, yeah, 20 years ago when Man United were all the best in the world, yeah, and they look across the road and Man City was yo-yoing between divisions, yeah, they were shit. They were the noisy neighbours. They had a banner up in the Stretford End celebrating how many years they won trophies, yeah. That was their mentality. And look what's happened. Calm has come round. He's bit them on the arse now. And they're not even the biggest team in Manchester anymore. One's in the Europa League. One's in the Champions League. One's top of the league with two games in hand. And one's boasting about the Charity Shield. So what do we need to say about that? Manchester is blue, my friend. The noisy neighbours are here to stay. So keep your Paul Pogba and we'll keep winning the league. Great. Right. The, the funniest thing about that is just to say one comment is that, um, Steve, you've done a fabulous job for making up some great story as to how the Champions League is not important. But here's the reality. Till you win something in Europe, you're not going to be respected in Europe. And we've won the Champions League. We've won the Cup Winners' Cup. Oh, we've won the Cup Winners' Cup. Oh, oh, we've won the European Trophy. You're, 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 you're bringing up a Mickey Mouse Cup from the 70s. Brilliant. Okay. You're bringing okay. up the Charity Shield, mate, in the, in the 2000s. So what are you talking about? <laughs> I think the charity shield is look, you can only be in it. Here's the thing about the charity shield. You can only be in it if you're a champion of some form. You mm -hmm. win you win the FA Cup or you win the league. Mm -hmm. So you're talking about that cup winners cup is that the Intertoto Cup, mate. They give that for getting a, a few yellow cards every season. Please, mate, let come on. <laughs> Let's show a bit of respect for the you said you've got to win <laughs> European <laughs> trophy. I'm just telling you that we've already won a European <laughs> trophy and then it's all Cup winners cup, the teams in the cup winners cup were the like I beat for FC and stuff. Like, come on. Look, <laughs> let's go. Matt said a couple <laughs> yellow cards. <laughs> You're taking the piss, look, Keith. Look, Seriously. Look, all jokes aside, look, Steve knows there's only two ways to really, really gain respect in in uh, in British football. You either dominate in the league, which we know Man City. This Man City team is not legendary enough. It's not good enough to dominate. They had, they, they had, look, they just about can have 18 months on, on the top of the league. Man United dominated for seven, Centurions, eight Centurions, mate. Centurions, never oh, been done. Centurions, never been done. Formidable's never been done. You just said, you've just said, they're not legendary enough. We've just done two things that have never been done in the history of football. And you've just said they're not legendary enough. You won the Europa League with Paul Pogba. Well done. You know, none of that, you know, none of that means anything. You know, look, here's the thing, yeah? That's like, look, that Centurions team is probably probably the fourth best team, maybe the fifth best team in Premier League history. 100 points, who cares? Yeah, you've done it. It's great. No, it's a great achievement. 
But in the, his, in, the, in the whole grand scheme of things, since the dawn of the Premier League in 1992, it's the fourth, maybe even arguably the fifth best Premier League team of all time. That's it. That's what you've achieved, really. Yeah, that's what you've achieved. Not better than the Invincibles. It's not better than the treble winning team. It's not better than Liverpool's uh, Liverpool's pre uh, uh, Premier League winning team. It's not better than Chelsea's oh, sorry, first one in 2004. Oh, you are talking some shit, man. You talk some shit. <laughs> I'm going to fly through these super chats before we continue. Um, um, Chelsea, <laughs> the most ruthless club in the UK, has lower standards than Manchester United. Okay, then. Um, I'm not sure what you mean by that, David, but thank you for the super chat. I mean, we, we obviously did sack our manager, but this is not a Chelsea show. Every other day of the week, I address Chelsea. This is my break to um, host a fantastic opportunity of the Battle of the North because it's the, it's the only way I'm going to be able to talk title. As much as I'm excited about Chelsea's future this season, I won't be talking any title talk this season. I have to, I have to watch the, the Battle in the North take place. Nobody, nobody says, Steve, um, clubs go through cycles. We're rising again. I wouldn't even say Man City even went through a cycle because... That wouldn't that would say that you guys like went down, you know, out of top four or something. You you haven't really disappeared off this off the off the scene like that. No, nope. so, you know what they've done? You know what they've done? Mm, they just chucked mm. money on it. They just kept throwing money at it. I'm not gonna lie, you have spent a lot of money, a lot of money on them defense. Yeah. They, they don't build but players yeah. from the ground up. They don't no no, we, we you, you give a player away for free and buy him back for hundred million. You give a player away for free and buy him back for 100 million. So don't tell me about I'm, building players. I'm with Scott, I'm with Scott McTominay cost and players like that. Who cares so, about Scott McTominay? What's he won you? Nothing. Okay. What's he won you? Nothing. <laughs> what did you do? Sorry. You beat Southampton 9 0. Well done. <laughs> what did he do? Did he, did he score from 45 yards or 40 yards against Edison? What did that get you? What did that get you? What did that get you? What did it get you? Because he didn't score matter. in the semi final. We won the cup. We won that game, mate. That's what matters. <laughs> we won that game. I want to. I want to go into Man City's defensive record because that we always speak about a team that wins titles, right? And this is where you have to look at this, Akeem, as well, right? When you when you, when we speak about a team that, that wins titles, we usually say it's built on a good defense, a strong defense. You look at you talk about that Chelsea team, talk about that invincible team. I don't know how they were defensively exactly, but obviously they was unbeaten, so they must have been fairly decent. But I know that Chelsea team were very good defensively. Man City have only conceded 13 goals this season in, in 20 games. Man United have conceded 27. Are you not worried about the, the ish, that, that gap there alone? Are you not worried about Man United's inability to keep clean sheets, to defend competently for a, a string of games? Because that could be your undoing, isn't it? You can't just keep scoring yeah. and scoring no, no, um, game in, game out. Absolutely. But I think a lot of that has been down to, look, we, we've not really... There was a lot of um, issues with knowing our strongest back four. For most of the season, for the first three months of the season, we pretty much had a different back four every other week. You know, mm. as in one, one player, you know, we didn't keep the same consistent back four. Since we've done that, and Luke Shaw and Harry Maguire has been more stable, we haven't actually conceded that many goals in the last, you know, eight to ten games. The first start, the, at the start of the season, we were conceding. We, we do have a few bad games now and again. It's not really from mistakes. It's more from our system of play. Man City... Have, have a brilliant defender, a brilliant centre-back in Ruben Diaz. I do not um, deny that. One of the best in the world um, currently, 100%. However, they concede a lack of goal like they always have because their style of football. They get a, they have about 75% possession on some games. So because of that, their team's not exposed. And this is one of the reasons why they everyone's got brainwashed into thinking Edison is a half-decent goalkeeper. Anytime he's exposed or peppered, he falls apart. He looks out of position. He looks lost. He looks drunk most games, to be honest with you. But when... But, but, because, you because, you, because your team keeps the ball for most of the game, he's never exposed. So he gets the, he gets plaudits that he's a great goalkeeper. And that's what's happening. As soon as as soon as the team takes it to Man City, they'll get exposed. But they've got a brilliant defender. They've got a brilliant centre-back in Ruben Diaz. Brilliant. Yeah, you're, you're defending. Well, he's taking it to us then. As soon as it, we're halfway through the season. As soon as the team takes it to us, we're going to crumble, yeah? So we played everybody once. It happens, in the Champions it happens in the Champions League every year. That's why you get done. We've, we've, we've won every single game in the Champions League this year. Yeah. Every single game we've won. We've not drawn. We've won them all. That's because you get the easiest draw. But, and in the second yeah, round, you always get the easiest draw. Since it gets to the big games where you can't um, fake it, you can't pay people under the table. Forget, guys, forget Fergie time. Forget all of that nonsense that Man United used to get helped out by referees. The real fraud and the real fake crap is that Man City, someone please, 
do some investigation between Man City and draws in the FA Cup, the League Cup. Listen, UEFA's just done an investigation, mate, and we've sorted them in court and smoked them, so don't be bringing that. This is this is how far you have dropped as a fan base that you're here. Now, below me, I'm glad you put him below me in this chat, yeah, because he is below me. You, you've got you there now talking about bribing people, paying people. This is the Man United, this is the modern day Man United fan. And you only have to look in them comments there. And he's got all his little groupies that have never been to a match before in their life who watch the travel DVD every week talking absolute nonsense. And all the blues are rising up in the chat because they know they've finally got someone that's going to say it how it is. And I'm telling you how it is. You're shit. We're top of the league. And we'll see you then. Who's crying? It won't be you. It won't be me crying. It'll be you. You're joint top. You can't can't say the word top. You're joint top. Look at the league's table now when he was on the top. Doesn't matter. No one cares about that. Joint top. Until until everybody cares about being on top, mate. I know you don't because it doesn't happen a lot. You was top for two (laughs) weeks. We're we're both top. We're joint top. Okay. Listen, I'll accept joint top. It makes you feel better and you can sleep well at night. You can say you're joint top. But I know the truth and all the blues know the truth, yeah? Is, is there, is there, I mean, I guess, Steve, I want to give you like a, is there any, is there any part of your team or any worry or situation that you maybe want sorted in January, the transfer window had just gone, that would have, that would have solved a little issue in your team that you think is, that could, that could make this title race interesting? Or do you think you're just, you're going to go clear? No, we're struggling. We're struggling with the striker situation. It's a problem. We, how we've got away with it for so many years with just Aguero and Jesus, it's um, it's beyond me. But um, so it's definitely a problem. Aguero is definitely not the player he was. The injury keeps coming back to his knees. He, 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 as soon as he gets back, he's out again. So that's definitely an issue. Um, are you going to get a good striker in January? No. Are you going to go out there and just rush rush someone in and, and maybe cover? They were talking about Eddie Dzeko being offered back to us and stuff. No, he's not taking that pep. The left-back issue is a problem. Mendy's had two knee operations in the last three seasons. He's not the same. He looks like he's lost a yard. It's bad for Mendy when you've got a, a central midfielder playing at left-back uh, instead of you. So he needs to look at himself. Um, so, yeah, they're the, they're the weak spots for me. The, the, strike, the strike force and the left-back position. Um, Diaz has come it's in though, and Diaz the left left sided centre back. Just... Diaz has brought a little bit of stability to that side, so um, we're not that exposed down there anymore, to be honest. Um, it's weird that you've only got two strikers. I remember when you had Edin Zeko, um, you know Aguero, you know you had even Balotelli, you, yeah, Tevez. You at, at times because I remember my United's best teams as well. You know, Berbatov, Rooney, Tevez, Ronaldo. You always, you know, made sure both of you, when you was at your pinnacle, that you had three, four top strikers or top goal scorers in your team that were gonna that were gonna chip in along the season. And and I can't see that in City's team in terms of with Mancini. Mancini, he he played two strikers, so you know, two of them were playing every week, so it, it made sense to rotate two, so two and two. With Pep, he's only playing the one, so um. He thinks two's enough. It's not it, well. I can't say it's not enough because the proof's in the pudding. It, it's it's been good enough. We've been scoring goals for fun the last few seasons. But when we struggled this year, when we didn't have Aguero or Jesus, and he played De Bruyne sort of up there, and then he played that false nine. He did it with Barcelona, and he played no striker and stuff, and it, and it worked. So he's thinking in his head, we don't need a striker. But look, I'm not going to argue with him. But you asked me a question. Where do I think we're the weakest? I think we're the weakest up top and I think the left side, I think the centre of defence is, is, is strong now. I think the right back position is strong now. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. It's down to the other teams to put it on us, isn't it? And we'll see where and we he, go. I, we, spoke about, um, we spoke about Luke Shaw in terms of his his improvement or rapid improvement, potentially maybe because Tellers came in and managed to give him a kick up the arse in the competition. But, How's how's Fernand Torres this season been for you in terms of ranking him? I know he's only twenty years old. He did play up front. You spoke about playing to De Bruyne up front yeah. as well. He played up front a bit in, in in some games, especially in Europe as well. What did you what have you made of him this season in terms of his debut season? He's obviously talented. He's talented. He's scoring goals in the Champions League and he scored. He's chipped in in the league. Um, this is his this is his uh, bedding in season for me. Um, he wasn't bought to go straight in the first team. Obviously, he wasn't bought to replace David Silva. He was bought to, as, to come in. We lost Leroy. So, um, they've obviously looked at 
potential signings and thought, right, let's get him in, he's young, let's build him up. And I think you'll judge Torres next season. I think he'll be um, a lot more involved than what he was this year. But yeah, he's had a good season for me. Mm. Got a comment here saying Akeem never learned from the Aguero moment we are top um, better on goal difference. That goal difference does play a key part. And that's why, really, it's, it's mad to me, Akeem, that you guys scored nine goals today and it still didn't put you on top on goal difference. That just goes to show the catching up. But it's, that that was a good game for you because yeah, those I, nine I, goals is, is, is crucial. It could come down to goal difference. So those nine 100, goals are huge. 100 percent yeah we need to pick up these these you know and that's one of the things that united with van Hal, uh, the way van Hal is as a as a manager the way Mourinho is as, as a manager we you know we we had games when we were winning three four nil you know i mm. think even there was a period when uh, uh Mourinho won four nil three times in a row three games in a row and what you find with managers like them that Mourinho usually calls off he usually takes his best players off he usually literally tells them to relax um mm. and play less whereas you got managers like Brendan Rodgers or Pep Guardiola. That's the can be opposite. When they're three nil up, they're they're just working just as hard, almost like they want to break records. They wanna they want to be on top of the leaderboard. Now we seem to have that mentality again in when we are you know going for it. The same with when we played Leipzig. We were fr we were two. Or I think it was when we scored the third. You know we mm -hmm. could have just stopped. We could have relaxed a little bit. You could see the energy and the aggression with the way we were playing that we wanted to get. We wanted to ultimately embarrass them or really really hammer home you know we are here and we're scored we, we we have one of the best attacks in the world and that's what we showed today you know so i feel like um a lot of people um give a little bit of stick to the likes of martial and rashford um mm -hmm. but let's not forget martial rashford and greenwood were i think the fourth um best free um um attackers in the world football last year they mm -hmm. scored more than the front three of Liverpool. And we know how good that was last year. So true. Let's, yeah. not, let's not forget how good those three are when they are scoring week in, week out. Um, so they do get a bit of stick. And that's the reason why I said Martial is best. is a world beater. You know, he'll walk into almost any side in the Premier League. In fact, he will walk into any side in the Premier League at his best. So um, that's just an idea of how good this guy is and how good many of the players are that we're talking about. Steve, I know you've got something to say there. I can see it. <laughs> Right here, Marshall, Marshall walking to my side right now for Gabriel Jesus. Walking, look at the guy, yeah, but no, listen, what has he done? Is he consistent? Is he consistent? No, yeah, half the time he's on the bench because he's not, not, not consistent. Yet. Don't gas Marshall, come on, not, you're a Man United not, fan who's watched some of the best strikers of all time. Do not gas Marshall up in the same breath as half of them not, people. Not, come on, Marshall, he only Marshall. plays well when he wanted a new contract and then he got a new contract and then he's shit again. Mar Martial has potential, yeah. Give him time. How old is Martial? How can you have potential? He's been there for about 10 years. He's 25. He's 25. 25. So, yeah, it's, it's getting broke here, Q. I remember time. when you were getting on to me about Loftus Cheek, same kind of thing. Do you know what I mean? Give him time, yeah. Give him time. Give him time. Look, he's only he's, he's still early days for Martial, yeah. Mm. Look, give him time, give him a couple of years to get his feet together. And we'll he'll show how good he is. Like I said, he's the closest thing, even Henri said it himself. Closest oh my thing. god, Henri said he's the closest thing to hit at 21. Do not, years old. do not, at, do 21, not. At, at 21. He said, Henri oh, himself, Henri oh, himself, Henri himself oh, said, and Henri. He, said he said, Martial is better than me at 21. That's what he said. Do you know why Henri said that to make himself look good because he knows that Martial ain't fit to lace his boots. So he said that, so people go, oh, yeah, Martial. There's only you lot in world football that gas up Martial. Nobody else rates him. No other team rates Martial. No other fan base rates Martial, only you. And that's why he's only with you. Nobody wanted him. Even when you're shit and you're in your own leagues, nobody came in for him because no one wants him, mate. You they wanted him. No one wanted him. Last year, last year no, you they but either, either way, it doesn't matter. We don't care who wants him because there is no real ceiling above Man United besides Barcelona and Real Madrid. If you want, if you want a few siestas and you want a few sangrias every week, that's look. If I wanted to go to Spain for the weather and and to play with some of the best players in the world, like Barcelona in, at Barcelona or Real Madrid, I would go there one hundred percent. But as a club, as a football club. At the size of Man United, there is no, there is nothing above Man United. We can all agree there. So why would you, you, you in England? In England, we're above you. In what football? Is Man no one above Man United? You said we're above you in the league, so that's all I'm saying. Yeah, but now you're talking about league position. I'm talking about prestige as a football club. Listen, do you know what your big problem is? Yeah, 
You're too hung up on this prestige thing and talking about history. The sooner you get out of the system, the sooner you get back down to earth and the sooner you realise it's 2021 and not 1999 or 1992. Because I know you think football began in 1992, but it didn't. Listen, stop it. You're Man United. Yeah, we understand that. You're not that big giant club anymore. You're not. You're signing Igalo on free transfers. You're signing Cavani on free transfers. You're talking about trophies years and years ago. Nobody cares. You slated Liverpool for talking about trophies in the past and you've turned into them and talking about trophies in the past. So get real. You was a big club. You're not no more. Win the Premier League and we'll talk. At the end of the day, you're a Europa League club now. That is it. That is all you are. You're signing garbage players for massive money because you have to pay over the odds to get them. You're paying massive wages. People like Sanchez are having you over a barrel. That is the Man United you know now, not the Man United that I used to know. Well, you're right. You're right. You're, you're right. We've got players who are overpaid, overpriced, or overpaid. Shall I say? You know what you were talking years ago? You got a freeloaders in your. Uh, do you know? Do you know what, Akeem? Do you know? You know, we do talk about prestige, and I do agree. Man United are probably the biggest club in England. I don't think I can. You know, I, I don't right. think I can argue with that. However, when Bellingham rejected you guys to go to Dortmund. I thought I thought that was a big moment where you, your prestige yeah. took a hit. No, 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 no. Look, we get rejected by players who want to play more solid, more guaranteed football, because a lot of the time, Jude Bellingham has noticed that a lot of players in Man United's um, academy or youth or young players over the last couple of years has not ever really had that transition and got um, first team football week in, week out. We've had, we're having that problem with um, Greenwood and he's generational. He's a generational talent and he's not being played, he's hardly being played. You know, he is generational. You generational. Even, I think you even said it yourself, Matisse, actually. You know, I don't Matisse. know about that. You're I'm pretty have sure you said it yourself. You'd have to find that clip. He's, he's, gener he's generational. You know, the, the pecking order of the of, of the young of the um, young British footballers coming in is Greenwood and then Phil Foden. They're the top two, yeah? What about, what about Saka, no? Saka? Yeah, and Saka, and, and Saka, they're the top. They are the, the top three at the moment. Yeah. So, okay. but look, the long story short, Greenwood, even as good as he is, is hardly being played. So, look, not every footballer chooses a team just because of the size of them. Yeah. Sometimes they choose for different reasons. But if it is down to size, look at look at Sanchez when he was about to go to Man City, or allegedly, of course he wouldn't go to Man City. He's a, he, he's got a picture with, in his, with his dogs when he was fourteen years old. Wearing a Man United shirt. It was about money. How did that turn out? How did that turn out? That was about money. That was about money. Right. You know no, no, no. It was about money. It was about money. You watched the Amazon documentary. You know it. You know it's about money. Right? Look, 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 look. And City look, pulled out the deal. City pulled out the deal when his agent tried to pull a fast one. Said Man United oh, wanted him. So he said, oh, I, love I, love I, love I love it. Only Man City. Man City fans have lost out in every single duel between Man United and and um and United for yeah. a play. Yeah, Tevez. Yeah, we didn't want him. We didn't want him anymore. <laughs> what was you singing? Fergie, Fergie, sign him up. Fergie, sign him up. Fergie, okay. Fergie, sign him up. Okay. Tevez, Man City legend, mate. Bye-bye. He, he done the job for us as well. So we we don't mind. He done the job for us. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. Your player, yeah, sure. your, your players, I remember the story, Matisse, that when they lost out to Maguire, oh, we didn't want him anyway. We didn't want him anyway. Yeah, of course you didn't. What happened is you got an email saying, sorry, our client doesn't want to play for a Mickey Mouse side that hasn't won anything. I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm glad. Who's got the better defence now? Sorry, you would... Maguire... Who's, got, who's got the better defence now? Harry Maguire would get in our reserve team, mate, so don't talk oh, shit. Oh, brilliant. Maguire. Brilliant, do you, brilliant. I, I do want to get your opinion on this, Akeem, before. Do you, do you rate Harry Maguire highly? Because I've had this discussion with Maynard fans. It's very 50-50. Put it this way. If we were doing an eleven, which I know we're not doing, but if we if we did do an eleven of Man City and Man United players, Ruben Diaz and, and Harry Maguire are the best two centre backs out of that roster. Harry Maguire is top five centre back in the Premier League. I don't think he is better than Laporte. One of, I don't think better he, than Laporte. Do you know what? Do you know what we'll do right? next week when Drifty's back? We'll do a combined eleven of all three of your oh. teams. And I want to see who, we'll, we'll who do, gets we'll in. Combined 11. We'll do a combined 11. I don't have a problem with that. But what I'll mm. say is, when it comes and to the midfield like, conversation... Can Diaz get in that team? Maguire don't get in that team. Mm. Van Dijk and Diaz, he, do, he does. You're right. And Maguire will be on the bench. You're right. That, that is one thing I can agree with. That's the only mm. thing. That's the only one thing, thing I can agree United, with. One thing, Akeem, if one thing that United fans do, yeah, is they love to talk about Harry Maguire. Yeah, they love to talk about Harry Maguire. Yeah, they love to talk about Harry Maguire. You've been brought up. 
on absolute like, prime like, stake, yeah? Prime stake players you've been brought up, yeah? And then this absolute garbage pile of shit you're watching now, I'm trying to compare to the good old days. You should be ashamed I'm not, I'm of yourself. Not, no, that's the thing. I can't talk for other Man United fans. I'm not comparing them. I'm not going. I'm not saying Harry Maguire's one of the best midfielders we, defenders we've ever had. Martial to Thierry Henry. Thierry Henry didn't play for us. Number one, number two. Everyone, if you watch the way Marsh, uh, Martial glides in and out of channels and the way he does pick up the ball and cuts inside. The only similarities yeah. between Martial yeah. and Henry is the French and Martial's got two legs and Henry's got two legs. He's got Henry tendencies. He's got Henry tendencies, the way he finishes the ball. In fact, I think he I think he done it against one of you boys a couple of years ago. He scored a Henry tap finish. But anyway... <laughs> he said he's got two legs. I don't need to We don't gas up players. The problem is here is that Steve has realised that he, he's sitting there shaking, thinking, oh, my God, um, Pogba, Pogba is best. is unstoppable. He can't get shaking. to him. So let, let me be a bit rude. Let me, let me be rude and demeaning to Pogba whilst he's not on form. But guess what? Guess what, Steve? Now he is on form. And guess what? Bruno and Pogba will walk into your side in a heartbeat and they'll walk into every single side in the Premier League. That's why we beat you. That's why we beat you the other week, and that's why you got beat off Sheffield United because Bruno and Pogba are a role in the league. Hey, that's why happened? we're the top. What and you're not. What happened that so, year? Oh, what happened that year? The game that I was at a couple of years ago, Steve. When but but, but even you know, Akeem, that, that performance. Thing, please, can I just say what? one thing? What happened yeah. a couple of years ago, um, Steve? I was so happy I was at that game. I was at that game in your room actually, two 0 up, and then who came back to save the day and we won the game three two? Was that Paul Pogba who scored two goals? When you tried to take him, when you when apparently yeah, he was coming you to you and you tried yeah, to you know him. <laughs> hey, do you know what happened, oh, Matisse? Do you know what happened, Matisse? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Pogba turned up, yeah. He scored two goals. They beat us three two, and then they went and lost to West Brom and won us the league. Defeats the object, doesn't it? Defeats the object. You can't turn up with blue air, beat Man City, and then lose to West Brom and hand us the league title. <laughs> That doesn't matter. Not that's saying not now, now is he about his pop up. That's not what we're talking about. That's not Listen, important. Listen, mad. Like I said, people. Listen, I this, you, this, this Man United channels, yeah. <laughs> the Man United channels, like and all them, they don't want me anywhere near that channel. I'm willing to get on there. I'll spray my head blue. I'll put MCSC on my face. I'll have tomato blue sauce. I'll do whatever they want. They don't want me on them shows, man, because I say how it is. Akeem, you know you used to support Arsenal years ago. Tell the truth. He was an Arsenal I hate fan. I hate as much it as be long, It won't be long before you 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 you're back an Arsenal fan when United are shit. You know, you can put a disguise on and all that, but we know it. I can't wait to go to the Etihad again and win away from home when I have to, and then walk, walk down This that. guy used to old every single week. Yeah. When United was winning. As United went shit. As soon as United went shit, this guy started selling Bitcoin and shit like that. He wasn't interested in football anymore. <laughs> Steve, Steve, trust me. Look, we, we, I know you love City, but... I don't like football anymore because United is shit. I, 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 I tell you what, I tell you what has helped City. So just before, just before we think, I, I, before Matisse asks his next question, I tell you what has helped City find some form. Yeah, is that you boys are so used to playing with no fans. I just wanted to touch that because we haven't spoke about fans, by the way. He acts like he's a really loud fan. I've never actually met another Man City fan that is, that is as loud and as outspoken as Steve. And I realised. He's probably even, even a Man United fan himself growing up. He probably had a Man United sharp view camp shirt. And all of a sudden, as soon as the money came in, all of a sudden we've got loads of Man City fans. I've never met a Man City fan before 2009, mate. That's it. Listen, all you need to do is go look on my Instagram page. You can see pictures of me in the 80s, mate, with my oh. city gear on. I never went over to the dark side. When I was growing up, mate, my dad wouldn't even let me have red crayons. As soon as he opened me crayons, he binned all the red ones. That's how bad it was <laughs> in my house, trust me. I love this show, man. Honestly, my, daughter, this... my kids are the same. Don't have no red shit. No red shit in my house. Don't even have red sauce in my house. You know that. Don't even have red sauce. <laughs> True story. True story, man. It's deep, oh, man. It's deep on the blue side. It's deep on the blue side. Oh, my God. People... 
listen, I, 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 this show, yeah, it's just like last week. And, and like I said, we've got our regular cast now. We're already missing Drifty as well. Drifty will be back next week. Um, this show, man, every every time I do this show, I'm just in stitches. I, someone just said I'm here for the vibes. I'm really just here to host and let mm. these men crack on. Like I said, this is the Battle of the North. It's the one show a week I don't have to talk about Chelsea, which has been a blessing over the last few months. Now we might actually pick up form, but we're not going to be in the title race. We're doing a top four thing. This is the one time I get to get to involve myself in some title talk and just let these men go at it. And when Drifty joins next week as well, God help it, fam. If he's if he's as confident about winning the league as Akeem is, then we've got we've got a serious show here, people. Um, Big Steve, let, let them know where to find you, bro. I mean, what, what a performance once again. <laughs> Big Steve MCFC on Instagram. Big Steve MCFC on Twitter. Terry's cool for the club. Crack on. <laughs> <laughs> Akeem, where can they find you, bro? And fantastic, the debut begins. Yeah, you know I mean, the expectations are high, Akeem. We're going to yeah, be doing that combined eleven next, next week. On, um, the first time on the TV's channel. Look, find me my full name on Instagram, Twitter, all of that. Um, and to be honest, I'm always there, usually posting some things, usually about United winning or something about teams like Europa League. Check out Akeem's channel for all your Europa League chat, things like that. It's great. <laughs> all right, yeah. We'll talk about stuff that we win. Yeah, we, we do. Yeah, we'll talk. Hey, you guys go to... Type, hey, do one thing after you finish this. Hmm. Type in Man City European title win on YouTube. See what comes up. Nothing. <laughs> oh, stop talking about this 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 cartoon stuff, please. <laughs> this, 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 this trophy, Guys, make, make sure you smash the like button. Make sure you subscribe if you're new as well. We've just hit 9,000 subscribers, which is great. We're chasing that 10k. Hopefully, maybe even this week. We've got some big guests lined up, maybe a big journalist, definitely some Tottenham previews coming up tomorrow. You know, London's Club Carnage with Lee Gunner and Tottenham Tobes is tomorrow. I think expressions is tomorrow as well, so that could be that could be a madness. Um, Farad as well from um, stoppage time as well. That's going to be good. So and then we got Tottenham and all you can eat Chelsea. So the, the shows, you know, we got probably three three shows tomorrow, two the day after when we've got Tottenham as well. And um, so it's going to be jam packed, man. So people make sure you subscribe. And like I said, this show is is weekly as well, every Tuesday um, night or evening. And like I said, Drifty will be joining us next week to to complete the the core trek. Um, before we move on into the rest of the season. We've got the expectations from the two boys. They both expect to win the league. I'm interested to see what Drifty's got to say next week as well. Um, and then we're going to do a combined 11 next week with all three um, um, Northern teams. And let's see. Let's just see how, how many of May United's players get into that team, Akeem. <laughs> I don't mind. People, it's been an absolute pleasure. Um, I'll see you guys tomorrow, like I said, um, one o'clock with Lee Gunner and Tobes. In a bit, people. Peace. Three, two, one. Here we go.